Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Microdesk webinar series. My name is Ravali Ravulapati, and I'm the Marketing Manager for the California region. Welcome to today's webinar, Building Design Suite Inventor 2012. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Microdesk is an Autodesk Gold, Oracle, and Google partner. We provide technology training and consulting solutions for the AEC industry. We have 11 offices located throughout the East and West Coast with a staff of over 90 consulting and technical specialists. Over the next hour, you'll see how Inventor will work into your workflow with, add, with new possibilities to your design, with your design visualization. In this session, we'll create custom elements which can be migrated into your Revit model via the Autodesk file format. Presenting today's session is M2 Solution Engineer, Kevin McHugh. And those of you who don't know, M2 is a sister company to Microdesk. Kevin has 25 years of experience in CAD and CAM field. He's extremely knowledgeable in Autodesk and CATIA products, workflows, and engineering process. Just a few logistics before we begin. In order to minimize any background distractions, you're all on mute for the duration of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. Kevin will address as many questions as he can at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time, we'll provide you with our contact information so you can follow up with us. And now, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this, I'm going to show my screen here. Give you a second so that'll can see that. So this is Inventor. So we're going to start off from the perspective of the architect who's going to be creating this BIM content. And Inventor is a sketch-based system. And one of the things you can do is you can you can use AutoCAD, your 2D AutoCAD data. So this could be data that you created with your for your submittal drawings or your cut sheets or things like that. And we can repurpose that and reuse that inside Inventor. Inventor's aware of um, the units, so you can see it, it understood that there were units there, uh, unlike AutoCAD and how that works. And now we can take this data, and I'm going to extrude some of this into a 3D sketch. So you can see I can grab this profile information here, and I can say, well, I want to measure that, the front view. So I'm going to measure this line in the front view, and that gives me my distance. So by Utilizing data from the side view and the front view, I can ultimately <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to choose some more from the side view here. And I'm going to take this and measure. And measure again that side view. And you can see I can got that the other part of this. So essentially I'm creating this part that we're going to use as BIM content. Let's create another sketch here on this face. And we can project data. So I can say I want to project some of this 2D data onto that. And Turn this sketch back on so I can utilize that. So I'm going to extrude this again. And use the measure option and measure that line right there. So you can see slowly but surely, feature by feature, we're building this up. I'll create another sketch on this face and project this geometry here. Also project this. Take this profile and extrude that. And we'll take that and measure that line right there. I'll create one final sketch here on this face. And we can get some geometry here for these piping connections. And we'll project those onto that face and extrude those. Again, using that information from the side view, I can use the measure command and measure that. And 
Now, I have all this information on this side, all these extrusions. I can use the uh, mirror feature command. I can say I want to mirror this data here. So I mirror all this about this plane, mirror it on the other side. So that's kind of the basic modeling process involved in creating some of this BIM content. Now we're going to we're going to go and publish that data. First, I'm going to turn off some of these profile, this 2D geometry, so it looks a little bit better. Now we go into Inventor and we go to the in BIM Exchange portion of the software. You can see immediately it's identified the inputs and the outputs for this this heat exchanger. And I can go in here and I can um, essentially redefine those. So it's found those faces. I want to locate that face. I want to determine the flow direction, in or out. Uh, I want to determine the connection type. So when this is dropped into Revit MEP, Revit Architectural Structural, or AutoCAD MEP, it's going to recognize those connection points. So immediately if I want to establish piping or run piping to these, I can do that right inside uh, Revit MEP. So it's all authored, ready to go. So, so there's an input, there's an output on that side, and then conversely on this other side we have the same. Okay. Now we can hit the export button and we'll export that to the ADSK format. One thing I want to do before I do that is I want to establish the UCS. The UCS will, will show how it will establish its orientation when it comes into the model. So I'm going to just put that at 0, 0, 0. I can also rotate that. I want to rotate that about the x-axis 90 degrees. All right, so now I've got my UCS in there, so it's going to come in in the right and proper orientation. I'm going to bring that in. Now, other data, there's a lot of metadata that, that we can we can determine or we can set up here. We can determine the category. Uh, this is a climate control device. It's uh, for energy treatment and in circulation, so we can establish that so the, all that data comes out in the bill of materials properly in the schedules. All this information. And then, we again, we output that to uh, an ADSK file, ready to be brought into to Revit, MEP, architectural, or structural. Okay, now we're going to look at, next we're going to look at this from the manufacturer's point of view. So we, we have this manufacturer who's made this, this big chiller, and he wants to give this to the architect to use as BIM data. Now there's a lot of information in here, as you can, as you can well see. If I go in, if I turn off some of these components, like if I turn off the visibility of the outer shell, you can and you zoom in, you can see there's a lot of piping. Now, all this information isn't needed by the architect. So uh, one of the things we can do is we can just go in and we can uh, window this information. And we can turn off or suppress things we don't need. So I'm going to go in there and do that. Give me a little lag time, so. All right, so this area right here, say, all this piping information here, maybe I, I want to suppress. I don't want to see that. So I select that. I can right click, and I can suppress it. That's basically taking it out of memory. So all the internal component data isn't really required by the architect. He just needs to know the interface points, uh, the inputs and the outputs. 
so when he hooks up his rep piping, um, he's got all that data. So um, I'm going to go in now to into the BIM exchange section again. And it's initializing, and ultimately it's going to come up in a second here. Uh, right now, it's it's just it's uh, right into this. So ultimately, I think that the web seminar or the web capturing software is just slowing me down just a little bit. But I should come back in a second or two. Now, it also is searching out you know inputs and outputs. You can see it automatically found these inputs and outputs I find it inside of Inventor, and those are going to be established in the, in the BIM content data as well. Now one of the other things that we can do here is uh, use the shrink wrap option. First I'm going to save this file. Save this level of detail. I have to save it before I can output that because I've changed that that data. So it's going to create a new part inside of Inventor, and it's going to allow me to basically de-feature this part. So based on geometry size, based on um, the visibility of the parts, say I've turned off some of those parts, so it's going to automatically exclude those from, from that file. You can also have it you know, do things like patching up holes and all kinds of things like that. So if there's a lot of holes in a particular uh, plate or something, it'll get rid of all those, which is ultimately going to cause the software to create many, many more facets and make the file larger. So again, you can get just the data that you need and bring it into your uh, your Revit MEP, Revit uh, Architectural or Structural, also Arch AutoCAD Architectural and AutoCAD MEP. So. Um, and a lot of, so you can see what it's doing here. All these surfaces are created because there's uh, it's patching up these holes and making everything uh, a unique solid or a closed solid, essentially. So calculate the mass properties and apply that as metadata as well. So, but ultimately, you know, at least the architect, or the structural engineer, can know the weight of this thing, which might be pertinent in some of his. Uh, these calculations for sizing of beams and things of that nature. So it just takes a second. This is a this is a pretty large file, but um, something that ultimately is practical. So what it's also ultimately doing is it's taking this data and and faceting the data. So. It's very much like um, if you're familiar with 3D Studio Max, that kind of data. So it's sending it out in that format. So there's the there's the ultimate file that we're going to get. Now we can pop over into. I'm going to bring up uh, a session of Revit and bring that in so you can see what that's going to look like. Hang on, I want to bring that up. Okay, it's on my other screen. I'm sliding this over. So now you can see what that file looks like inside of Revit. So open that up. And there's your ADSK file. So it looks very much similar to you know the way it did inside of Inventor, except it's much, much lighter weight. It's got the connection data. So you can see if I zoom in down here, pan up a little bit. You've got the connection data for the piping, the inputs and the outputs, um, and all the metadata so that your schedules and your bill of materials fill out properly. And 
You can also plop it into um, your full building you know, model and see how that fits with the rest of the architectural design. So that basically concludes the technical portion. I'd like to hand it back to Rosalie. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm just seeing if there is anybody with questions here. Give me just a second. Okay. I guess the individual doesn't have any of the questions. All right. Well, there's no questions. I just want to thank you, Kevin, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. We hope you found this helpful and educational. If you'd like more information about what you saw today, you can visit our Building Design Suite 2012 website that's mentioned on the screen. There you'll find links and details about all BDS 2012, as well as information about your upcoming free webinars, events, classroom training, and other valuable resources. The next slide as well will have some information if you guys are interested, and I'll leave that up there for a couple more minutes. If nobody has any other questions, uh, thank you again, and have a great weekend. Okay, thanks, everybody.